Whoa, differential equations, brah. Okay, uh, consider differential equation. There he is. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation. Now that's way too many points, but you know you do what you got to do. So let's start. Let's. Uh, I like to start in the top left. That's just me. So that's a negative three and a three. So let's plug those in. Negative three and three. When I plug those into my um, my differential equation here, what do I get? I get negative three divided by three. Right. We put the x divided by the y, and I end up getting negative uno. And that kind of makes me think, because I'm trying to look at the fastest way to do this. I know at this point is negative one slope, so I do a little baby tangent line that has a negative one slope. Um, I'm thinking this, like, look, negative two, two, wouldn't that also give you a negative one? Yes, so you'll have um, a negative one slope there, a negative one slope there. Uh, this one's a special point because we have zeros. When you have a zero divided by zero, um, anything... Uh, that divides by zero is undefined. Okay, so um, I'm just not going to write anything there. And then I'm going to go like that and like that and like that because I'm going to keep getting negative ones for each of those. That makes my mind kind of curious. What about these points right here? You know, all these points have the same, have an X and a Y that are equal to each other. What would we get if we had that? If we had negative three and negative three? Huh? Huh? Yes, you got it. You would get a one. And same with negative two and negative two. You would also get a one. So I could put these points like this on there. Hey, that takes care of a lot of points right there that I don't have to plug in anymore. But now we have a bunch of other points in between those. So I'm gonna kind of go in this area right here first and see what happens. Oh, snap. But all these points right here and all these points right here, they all have zeros in them. So I kind of want to figure out what's happening on those first. First, let's look at this one. That one is negative three comma zero. What's gonna happen there? Negative three divided by zero? Oh, ho, ho, that's undefined. So all of these guys are gonna be undefined because they all have a y value of zero. Ooh, what about all these guys? Um, those have an x value of zero. So let's go uh, zero, three. That's gonna be zero because it's zero divided by three. Oh, snap. So all of these have a horizontal baby tangent line except for the origin, right? Because you can never divide by zero there. So boom, okay. I found all the easy ones, I think. Now I'm just gonna have to start plugging numbers in. Oh, boo, this is nasty. Uh, let's go negative three, two. What would we get? That's this guy right here. Negative three, two would be negative three divided by two. So that's a negative slope that's greater than one. Yeah, because this is negative one and one half. That's, well, it's lesser than negative one. Uh, so it's going to be steeper than that, but still going downwards. Okay, so I'm going to go like that. Uh, next, we have negative three comma one. Ooh, that was going to be negative three. Negative three divided by one is negative three. So it's even steeper and still negative. And then we don't get anything for anything on the x-axis. So I just have to test this one, and then I'm done with this little area right here. So that would be negative two comma one. That would be negative two divided by one. Okay, so it's steep. <laughs> but try to make it not look as steep as the other one. Okay, now let's do these guys. So we have negative three comma negative one. Oh, it's positive. Okay, so that's because negative three divided by negative one, that's positive three. So I'm gonna go positive. It's gonna be really steep right there, but positive. Oh, and I think I know what's going on here. I can kind of see what's going on. So negative divided by negative is going to be positive. So that means this side is also going to be positive, but not as steep because it's negative three divided by negative two. And I think this guy is going to look something like this. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be happy and satisfied with that one. All right. So I'm going to copy that over on this side because I'm pretty confident that we're following the pattern here. Um, this would be more steep. It doesn't exist. And then look, a little steeper than this guy would be a little steeper than that one. So now I'm just kind of like recognizing the pattern and I'm kind of making my baby tangent lines match my the pattern that I'm seeing. If you're not comfortable with that, then you're just going to have to start plugging in as many numbers as possible. And maybe you would start doing it in your head, which is actually a lot more pleasant than me than writing it all. It's annoying. Okay, um, right. The three divided by two. Okay, that one. This one should be not as... Oh, shoot. So that would be three... 3 divided by 2, oh yeah, and this one is 2 divided by 1, 
Uh, this one should be steeper than this guy. Oh man, I don't like those anymore. I gotta rewrite those. Okay, this one's not as steep. More looking like the the one, and this one is definitely way steeper than that guy. Okay, and then um, that would be really steep right there. All right, cool. I like what's going on here. Okay, now oh, man, plugging in numbers. I'm gonna do most of these in my head. Uh, two divided by three is positive, um, and less than one. Is it, no, it's negative two, doofus. Okay, so <clears throat> not as steep as the one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, negative one divided by two would be negative one half. <clears throat> yeah, that's symmetrical right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, that's better. Okay, uh, that's positive. <clears throat> okay, so there's my slope field. Oh, I guess my throat's kind of dry. Next one says, sketch a solution curve that passes through zero one. <clears throat> zero one is a um, <clears throat> initial condition. So zero one will be right here. And we go out to the right, trying to obey all the baby tangent lines, out to the left. <clears throat> there you have it. Letter C says, uh, find the particular solution. <clears throat> so we're gonna take our differential equation, <clears throat> dy over dx, which is x divided by y. <clears throat> And we're going to separate the variables and then integrate <clears throat> and then plug in our, our um, particular solution. So <clears throat> if I put the dx on the other side, it would look like this, x divided by y dx. And then I would multiply both sides by y <coughs> to get rid of that y and then integrate both sides. <clears throat> so for the first one, I get y to the second power divided by 2 plus c sub 1 because it's an indefinite integral. And the other one, I kind of get the same thing. <clears throat> now I'm going to combine the c's right off the bat just because um, there's too many c's on there. <clears throat> and then I notice, oh shoot, man, this they got two things squared. This kind of looks like a circle. Uh, but if I move this to the other side, it, it would be minus, and that's not a circle. <clears throat> if you're familiar with conic sections, that's a hyperbola. Now, uh, this is not a particular solution yet because we still have a C. And so in order to get rid of that C, we have to plug in an X and a Y to find the C. <clears throat> so, um, oh, you know what? We can also simplify this a little bit. Let's simplify it first. Let's multiply everything by 2. So it be y squared <clears throat> minus x squared equals, ooh, a new c, c sub 4. <coughs> okay, okay. So now I'm going to plug in 0, 1. 1 squared minus 0 squared equals c sub 4. c sub 4 equals, ooh, no. <clears throat> now that's c sub 4 not c sub, one, c sub 3. So we're gonna have to take this guy and plug it into the c sub 4, not c sub 3. So it's y squared minus x squared equals one. <clears throat> now usually, and actually because it says find y, it says find f, <clears throat> we're gonna have to get the y alone. So let's do that over here. So y squared equals one plus x squared. And then to get the y alone, I would have to square root both sides. But when you square root inside of an equation, you have to have plus or minus because it could be a positive or a negative. But now, um, what's your answer? Is it plus or minus? Or is it plus square root of 1 plus x squared? Or is it minus square root of 1 plus x squared? <clears throat> so um, what would f of x be? Is it the positive or the negative? Well... <clears throat> Look at our point. It says that if we plug in zero, we get a positive one. So if I plug zero into this, which one of these signs would give us a positive one? 
The answer is positive. But do we? Okay, so let's just get rid of this guy. There you go. That's your answer. And then the rest of the problem pretty much does the same thing, except this time you use <coughs> 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1 is, actually let's use black, is right here. And so when you graph that, that's what you would have. Look at that. That is definitely a hyperbola. Do you guys remember doing those? I hope so. Um, let's go have some fun on a differential. No, I don't want to go right here. Um, hold on, let me... Let me look up my um, slope fields, and I put this a link to the slope fields <clears throat> um, tool in your assignment. This is kind of fun. You can drag this point around right here, and it'll tell you the, the slope at any point. Um, I'm going to change this to match it to what we have going on. I think it's just x divided by y. So there you have it. There's x divided by y. You can like have fun with this. We can say it's just x. Um, <clears throat> and it changes all the slope fields. Look, does that look like a parabola? Parabola. Um, so divided by y, back to that. Okay, let's try our solution. Okay, this is our slope field. <clears throat> and actually, let's zoom in a little bit. This looks more like our slope field over here. Uh, you see our slope field? We're going back to the Desmos slope field. Let's see. <clears throat> let's plug in y square root of 1 plus, no, no, y equals, do this, y equals <clears throat> positive square root of 1 plus x squared. Look at that. Look at that. That's cool. That's the same thing we got. Now let's plug in the negative one. y equals negative square root of 1 plus x squared. Shoot. Shoot. I wanted to match my graph, so I'm going to make this a black line. <clears throat> I know, it doesn't really matter. But <clears throat> look, you even got your initial points in there. That's kind of fun. Okay, so um, <clears throat> looks like we did, did a good job. And that's it. Now, I didn't complete D and E, but you're going to end up doing the same thing. You're going to get the same thing if you plug in the initial value. The only difference is this a negative one. But if I plugged a negative one into this, you would square it, and then it would go away. The negative is insignificant. <clears throat> but I think the point here is, how do you know if you're plus or minus? And the answer is, whatever your particular solution is, it has to match it. Um, and that's it.